When is a level not a level? The answer is when it is a Tau cross. This is a level. This looks like a level, but it's meaningless on a past master's apron. What does this mean? The ritual says your first introduction into masonry was how to stand as an entered apprentice. You were shown how to form the Tau cross with your feet. I won't demonstrate it as it is obvious. But then as a past master, you see the towel on your apron as your last instruction. When a past master looks down at his apron, he sees three towel crosses. By then you should have learnt many things about the craft, especially geometry. If you fold this apron, like I'm going to show you in a moment, you can see that it forms the triple towel of Royal Arch Freemasonry. You have to imagine this apron as though I was wearing it. So for the viewer, it'll be upside down. So what you do is <coughs> put this to one side. It helps to fold the bottom a little bit. So the aprons, these old leather aprons are a little bit tough, a little bit hard. But if you move it round like this, and then the other one round like this, you will see <coughs> Oops. inside there is a, there we go, is that better? The triple towel of the Royal Archmasons. Does that work? Something like that? There we go. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> it makes more sense if you're wearing it and looking it upside down. Unfortunately, this lesson is missing from my past master's apron from the Grand Lodge of Japan. So the Tao represents the first and last lesson for a mason. Obviously, the Tau cross was important to the first three Grand Masters when they rewrote the ritual for the revival in 1717. What exactly is a Tau cross? The Tau, or Tav, is the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and in Greek, it is the T in the word Theos, meaning God. We read about it in Exodus concerning the Passover, but in the King James Bible, these references do not specify a Tau cross. The Kabbalists believe that the Tau stood for heaven and the Pythagorean Tetractus. In the Bible, Moses is told to make a bronze serpent and attach it to a pole. It is said that the Caduceus of Hermes was an outgrowth of the Tau cross and Moses' staff. Astrologically, the Tau corresponds with the planet Saturn. The constellation Taurus was in ancient times at the vernal equinox and was considered by the ancient Egyptians the emblem of a perpetual return to life. So the sign Taurus and consequently the Tau cross became the symbol of the vernal equinox and of immortality. But would Masons have known that in 1717? Albert Pike says in Morals and Dogma that the Tau represents life and at the same time God. So the triple Tau represents wisdom, strength and harmony. In the Scottish Rite, the quadruple Tau, part of the jewel of the 33rd degree, is a symbol of geometry perfected, as it is composed entirely of right angles, horizontals and perpendiculars. As the jewel of the Royal Arch, as practised in England, the Triple Tau, <coughs> the grand emblem of the Royal Arch Masonry, 
is so highly esteemed as to be called the emblem of all emblems. This is the triple tau <coughs> inside a triangle. <coughs> but why is the triple tau on a past master's apron in a blue lodge? The Act of Union of 1813 says, <coughs> ancient masonry consists of three degrees and no more. That is to say, those of the entered apprentice, the fellow craft, and the master mason, including the supreme order of the Holy Royal Arch. In those days, a mason had to be a past master to join the Royal Arch, which is probably the allusion to the triple towel on the apron. To get around this, the Royal, uh, sorry, the York Rite introduced a past master degree to quote Duncan's ritual, <clears throat> the past master is usually done by royal archmasons acting by order of the grand master. Yet in the York Rite system, the past master is a symbolic degree and the candidate isn't actually installed as the master of the lodge. But to learn more about this, a mason needs to join either Scottish Rite or the York Rite. Now, let's consider the triple tau. It is made up of three T's inside a triangle. <coughs> this. <coughs> the tau's come together to form a T and H. The Templum Hierosalum, the Temple of Jerusalem. And when used as the royal arch symbol, it is inside a triangle. A triangle is a great spiritual significance and represents God and his triune essence. Omnipotence, all-powerful, omnipresent, <coughs> everywhere, and omniscient, all-knowing. It has also been suggested that the triple tau represents the first three grand masters, but could also be a nod to the efforts of the three grand masters of the revival. Anthony Sayer, George Payne, and George de Sagulier. Now let's consider the Tau in geometry. Because though the above explanations are important, I believe that there was a, a meaning that was closer to the first three Grand Masters' hearts. In old times, the Tau was the Greek letter used to indicate the golden ratio when doing calculations. Since the 20th century, the Greek letter phi is used. It looks like a circle with a vertical line going through it. Mathematicians from Pythagoras in 500 BC and Euclid all studied the unique properties of this ratio and it has been extensively used in art and architecture. In 1597, a German professor of mathematics, Michael Meisterlin, <coughs> announced that he had calculated the golden ratio to eight decimal points, <coughs> being 1 to 1.618. But it is the work of his student, Johannes Kepler, that is important to Freemasonry. Johannes Kepler is famous for studying Fibonacci numbers, and he described the golden ratio as a precious jewel. <clears throat> he said that geometry has two great treasures. One is the theorem of Pythagoras and the other the division of a line into extreme and mean ratio. The first we may compare to a measure of gold. The second we may name a precious jewel. The expression division of a line into extreme and mean ratio was the way people explained the golden ratio in the 1600s. These two measures, Pythagoras' theorem and the golden ratio, are combined in what became to be known as the Kepler triangle. The Kepler triangle can be made when the short side of a right angle triangle has the value of 1. 
The hypotenuse is the golden ratio of 1, which equals 1.618. 1 and the third side is the square root of the golden ratio, which is 1.272. This demonstrates that not only geometric progression, remembering Kepler's interest in the Fibonacci numbers, but also the Pythagorean theorem. A Kepler triangle can be constructed with only a straight edge and compass by first creating a golden rectangle and from there the triangle can be structured. Though it is quicker to draw a triangle of sides 1.27, 1.68 and 1. <clears throat> it is also proved that this theorem is true for the Pythagoras theorem. The golden ratio is also important when drawing other shapes, such as pentacles or pentagrams. In contemporary history, during the difficult times of the Second World War, Freemasons used the forget-me-not as a symbol of recognition, as this is based on a pentagram. We often hear the phrase squaring the circle in relation to the golden ratio, but what exactly does this mean? Squaring the circle is a problem proposed by ancient mathematicians. It is the challenge of constructing a square with the same area as a circle by using only a compass and straight edge. Later, it was found that if you make a circle based on a Kepler triangle, which is then reflected into a square, then the area of both are nearly the same to with an error of less than 0.1%. <clears throat> the expression squaring the circle was first used in the 1600s as a metaphor for trying to do the impossible. Later, in 1882, it was shown that pi is a transcendental number rather than an algebraic irrational number, and so the calculation of squaring the circle exactly is theoretically impossible. So, to summarise... When we look at the pulsar plates of 1812, we can see that masons did not have decorations on their aprons at that time. In fact, only the virtual master did. And the aprons were not even square. So the triple tile on the past master's apron is a later invention. Because of Freemasonry's emphasis on geometry in the ritual, it seems to me that it is more likely that the first three Grand Masters used the Tao as a symbol of Kepler's two great treasures of geometry, the Pythagorean theorem and the golden ratio. Pythagoras is mentioned in the ritual, and the Tao now reminds us of the golden ratio. The fact that the Tao harmonizes with so many other religious and literary allusions would also have been gratifying to the members of the revival, of whom many were mathematicians and also members of the Royal Society. Thank you.